this space. I'm Catherine Dunlop, the Executive Director of Coalition for Humanity in Arkansas. On behalf of our Board of Directors, I welcome you to this press We recognize today, November 16th, as the National Great American Smokeout Day. It occurs on the third Thursday in November annually. The purpose for the Great American Smoke Out Day, and if you talk with those people who have been in tobacco prevention for a while, you will probably hear them reduce that thing down to gasoline. Those are the acronyms, and I will probably use that acronym today. The purpose of the Great American Smoke Out Day was first created to encourage smokers to quit for at least 24 hours. With holding on hope that that 24 hour period would lead to a lifetime of smoke free living. And the reason we hope that, because we know. Tobacco smoking is the single largest preventable cause of death and pre premature death and disease in the United States. More than 30 million American adults die each year from your smoke. The most important thing we believe that a smoker and other tobacco users can do to improve their health is to quit. We encourage the users of all tobacco products, nicotine products included. Sometimes we have them on separate aisles, on separate um, aisles, but we include them in this day. Tobacco, smoking, and vaping. We know that smoking is one of the strongest and most deadly addictions one can have. And we know that quitting successfully starts with a plan and a strong support system is helpful. It's also helpful. We hope smokers everywhere are encouraged, empowered, and supported on this great American smoke out day. With that being said, I hope you have a better understanding of why we do what we do why we say what we say on the Great American Smoke Out Day. I am not the only person who's going to be speaking and sharing information with you, and I'm going to bring a, a very next nice speaker. Person who's coming to give us greetings from this beautiful facility, Little Rock City Hall, City Hall is Mr. Michael Sanders. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Michael Sanders, Assistant Director of the Department of Community Programs, where I head up the Office of Neighborhood Safety. Uh, I would like to acknowledge Mayor Frank Scott Jr., the City Board of Directors, and uh, Ms. Donald, and the Coalition for a Tobacco Free Arkansas. Its members, partners, advocates, staff, and friends. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a partner uh, with the coalition in getting the word out about uh, tobacco use uh, and its effects. At this time, I will read a proclamation uh, from Mayor Frank Scott Jr. And it reads, Proclamation, City of Little Rock, Arkansas. Know ye all people by these present greetings. Whereas in 1971, author Pete Mullaney asked smokers in Randolph, Massachusetts to give up cigarettes for one day and donate the money they would have spent on cigarettes to a high school scholarship fund. And whereas this idea soon spread throughout the country, and in 1977, the American Cancer Society organized the first Great American Smokeout. And whereas the Great American Smokeout is held on the third Thursday of November to encourage adults to quit smoking and to help young people understand the long-lasting negative consequences of smoking. 
And whereas many public establishments and workplaces are now smoke-free to product, protect non-smokers, and support people attempting to quit. And whereas the CDC reported nearly 40 million U.S. adults still smoke cigarettes and about 4.7 million middle and high school students use at least one tobacco product, including e-cigarettes. And whereas it is estimated that each year nearly half a million Americans die prematurely of smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke. Now, therefore, I, Frank Scott Jr., Mayor of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, will hereby proclaim November 16, 2023 as Great American Smokeout Day in Little Rock and call upon all residents to join me in raising awareness about the danger of smoking and vaping and to take this opportunity to practice a healthy lifestyle, setting the example for our loved ones. In witness thereof, I have Hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Little Rock to be affixed on the 16th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. Signed, Frank Scott Jr., Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. And thank you for actually speaking the correct name for his department. I went to the side and Mr. Dwight Pritchard so gently reminded me for Catherine. It is not the part of community correction. <laughs> and I know that I work in prison ministry in my church and that just kind of flows out of my mouth. But I do want to know that I am not in a facility. I am at the municipal government, the city hall, here in the city of Ottawa. So that is a my correction and a knowledge. Moving on. We have what I like to say the next speaker is kind of a keynote speaker, if you will. She doesn't really need a long introduction. She's a very young woman, an accomplished young woman, and she has a lengthy bio already. So I'm just going to tell you her name, her title, and where she works, and I'm going to let her come to this podium and share information and speak uh, true to the occasion of today. I would like to introduce you Dr. Lena Jones, PhD. She's the assistant, she is an assistant professor at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences College of Public Health. At this time, I welcome Dr. Jones to the podium. Hi, I'm Dr. Dina Jones, and I'm an assistant professor at the College of Public Health at UAMS. Thank you to the coalition for having me today. Arkansas has one of the highest smoking rates in the country, and one in five Arkansans smoke cigarettes. So it's no surprise that Arkansas also has some of the highest rates of diseases caused by tobacco, like cancer and cardiovascular disease. The high smoking rate in Arkansas reflects a lot of the social and economic conditions that Arkansans are facing. If you ask, why do people smoke? One answer is the tobacco industry. In 2022, the tobacco industry spent over $110 million in Arkansas alone marketing their products. People who live in the South, who have lower incomes, less education, who live in rural areas with fewer resources or identify as a racial ethnic or sexual and gender minority, all rely on these tobacco products than people who do not have these products. Tobacco products are also cheaper, marketed more, and there are more people that sell tobacco products in these communities. As cigarette smoking rates declined, industry came out with new tobacco products like e-cigarettes, little cigars and like cigarillos, hookah, while still offering traditional tobacco products like pipes, smokeless tobacco, and large cigars. New tobacco products like e-cigarettes, hookah, and little cigars and cigarillos are very popular among people who do and do not smoke cigarettes, including youth, and industry benefits from people not realizing that these products are harmful and can be just as addictive as smoking cigarettes. Which leads me to my next question. Why is it so hard for people to quit smoking? 
It's not an issue of law. Although they are legal, cigarettes are just as addictive as other drugs like heroin and cocaine. Industry benefits from the misperceptions that cigarettes or other tobacco products help to relieve stress, can help you cope with life circumstances, or it's just what people in your community can lead to. Even so, over 60% of our Arkansans who smoke try to quit each year, and many more are interested in quitting smoking. If you use tobacco, please know that today can be the day to quit. It's okay if you're not ready to quit smoking, but I want you to give it a second thought. There are resources to help. We have Be Well Arkansas, which offers access to free wellness counselors. We have apps and text messaging programs that can help you do it. There's also free nicotine replacement therapy that can increase your chances of quitting smoking up to 50 to 60 percent. Websites like Smoke Free Gov can also help you to develop a plan to quit smoking. If you don't smoke or use a tobacco product, but you have a loved one or someone else in your life, maybe a friend who does, I urge you not to judge them and instead try to offer encouragement and support. They need it now more than ever when they're trying to think about quitting. Please know that there are others here in Arkansas who are with you to end the harms of tobacco here in this great city. I am a researcher in the Center for the Study of Tobacco, and I lead the Euclid Research Study at UAMS which is trying to understand why African-Americans who use menthol cigarettes struggle to quit smoking more than those who use non menthol cigarettes. I'm also part of several interventions with the Arkansas Delta, including the Fresh Liver Study, where we're trying to address issues like food insecurity to help make people be better to able to quit smoking. My research is the way that I try to help. But I want you to know, and I hope that my, current, my comments today help encourage you to quit smoking, and I hope together we can finish the fight against the Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I'm going to announce the next group of speakers, and they will follow in this order, one after the other. We're having someone who's coming to share his personal story. He's trusting us with that. I can recall more than probably seven years ago on a day called a Great America Smoke Out Day with white hair in this rotunda. The next speaker came to us as a tobacco user and he was going to speak to me with his personal testimony, sharing he's no longer that tobacco user. And that is going to be Mr. Perry Campbell. Following Mr. Campbell with a personal testimony, moving from a smoker to a non-smoker is Mr. Dwight Bridget. And following Mr. Bridget, we have a personal testimony from Ms. Shalanda Michelle, who's going to talk about the importance of lung health. And you will understand more once you hear her story. Following those speakers with their personal testimonials, we will have a call to action. You heard a great call to action from Dr. Jones, but we have another who is well able who is going to come with the call to action um, directly, um, directly her remarks to tobacco users, but as supporters, non-smokers, we are also encouraged to take action by standing in the gap with those individuals who use tobacco. And the person who's going to do that for us is Ms. Sandra Bullitt. And following Ms. Bullitt, we have another proclamation is going to be read, not another great American slowdown proclamation, but this proclamation is pertaining specifically to a flavored tobacco product, and that flavor being uh, menthol. And you will hear from Ms. Wonderlo with the Arkansas Cancer um, Coalition. So at this time, I welcome Mr. Perry Campbell to the podium. Perry. Uh, my name is Perry Campbell. I live in the city of Little Rock, Fleet Park. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Thorne, for inviting me back to share my testimony. As someone has been quit smoking for seven years ago, I wanted to share some thoughts about my journey. 
Turn a swamp of free lifestyle. This is an intended not to preach it to it anymore. We all have our past and our choices to make it come to our well-being. However, having experienced the transition from smoking to living smoke free, I feel compelled to share the positive impact it has had on my life. Quit, quitting smoking was for sure one of the best decisions I could ever make. It was challenging, no doubt. But the benefits have been truly remarkable about the experience of improving health, increased energy levels, and overall sense of well-being. Health is our most precious sense, and by quitting smoking, we can take significant strides toward safeguarding. Smoking not only affects our, our own well-being, but also impacts the world around us. I understand that quitting smoking is a personal journey, and each individual path will be unique. It may take multiple attempts, and it's okay to stumble along the way. In fact, I share a story about a friend being noted who I have known for seven years. I met him in the beginning of my quitting journey. He would come to my audience shop, and I would tell him, smoking myself. He called me last week and said he's been smoke free for two weeks. I'm proud of him and I'll be with him along his journey and supporting him. That's what matters. Support. It's determined to keep trying to support we offer one another. As a city of the team, we can create an environment that empowers and encourages each other to make healthier choices. Let's embrace a smoke free future and unlock many benefits that await us, wishing you all the health and happiness. My closing remarks, if I can do it, you can too. Good morning. My name is Dwight Preacher. I'm Tay Barrett's for this story. My story is going to be totally different from Mr. Campbell's story. I'm re entry coordinator now with the city of Little Rock. I've been the re entry coordinator since 2018. I was born a tobacco education specialist for the city of Little Rock. And before I took that position, I must admit, I was a smoker. But I always remember, you know, I was so convicted, fellow. So it ties a lot to my speech on the same day. I always remember, I made myself a promise to the Lord. I never get an opportunity to serve as people. I was serving the best of my ability. So I uh, when I transferred to the Department of Community Programs, I eventually got a tobacco job. I knew then, for me, I had to speak in the evenings about tobacco, and I was still smoking. I, I, I consider myself to be a hypocrite. So I can frankly say today it's been over 2,000 and some days since I smoked a cigarette. I think that's important because uh, cigarette is a disease, like it's all the same. Somewhere or another, 480,000 people die of some smoking related disease. They have killed more than suicides, AIDS, murders, car accidents, and problem. I ask you guys that smoke, just take a leap of faith, like I did in 2015. That's the reason why we have this problem here. To explain to you is to only take 24 hours to take a chance. I hope my testimony that I'm giving today will incite someone to take the pledge. Thank you very much. Greetings to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all of those that quit smoking. That is amazing. Um, I am Shalana Michelle, and I smell the breath. You should not smell the breath of death from inhaling someone else's cigarette smoke or big products. I survived 33 treatments of radiation to my head and neck area, and as a mother of four, I'll tell you that's scary. When we're smoking, we're affecting other people. My voice may go out, but I promise you, I'm okay. 
Second is what happens when you're smoking around children, friends, and family. According to the World Health Organization, over 880,000 people died worldwide from secondhand smoke related illnesses. That is a huge number and that is a problem. This also happens when you're city events or, or state events, walking on sidewalks or into businesses or our workplaces, and people are smoking and we are inhaling. We walk away with diseases and a potential death. Let's stop and value the right to breathe and clean air. Let's go for walks or do breathing exercises instead of smoking. And remember the 880,000 families that are affected by the death of a parent, friend, or family member from secondhand smoke. That's a big deal. Arkansas adds to that number, and Arkansas and the city of Little Rock can take a stand today by standing out smoking, because together we win. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandra Fuller. I am the project director for the College of Public Health at the University of Arkansas for Medical Science. It gives me great honor today to give the call to action to a powerful movement. On this day, individuals across the United States are encouraged to embark on a journey toward a healthier and smoke-free future. Today marks a significant occasion, the great American smoke out. For many decades, smoking has been the root to many health consequences. Smoking is a leading cause of preventable death. According to the CDC, 21.1% of Arkansas smoke cigarettes in 2021. Out of all 50 states, Arkansas ranks 48 in the smoking rates from the annual American Health Ranking Report. From this takeaway, there is still work to be done when there is still American dying from lung cancer. There is still work to be done when there is still American dying from heart disease. It is time to take control over the destructive grip of smoking. In lieu of this day, I would like to make a charge to all smokers, including vapors, to join in the break to get up their, give up their smokes for a 24 hour period. Please know that we understand that this may be a difficult task. However, this is a team effort. No one should be alone in making this life changing journey. The support from loved ones and the community are vital to see smokers through this journey. For some, this request may be small, but every small step towards a smoke-free life is a positive future ahead. As I take my seat, I would like to leave you with this thought. This is the day to do it for your family. This is the day to do it for your friends. But most importantly, this is the day to do it for yourself. This is the day. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Morning. First, I'd like to give a great big thank you to Ms. Catherine Donald and all tobacco advocates for the work they do in helping my community. I also want to thank my small but very powerful No Men's Law Committee, No Men's Law Arkansas Committee, who helped me put all this together. Uh, that's Mary Carrangel, one of my co workers, and Dr. Phil Gardner of the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council for his support in all of our projects. Uh, today is a special day in the city of Little Rock recognizing No Menthol Sunday. No Menthol Sunday has been recognized normally in the month of May, but we're doing it so nice we're doing it twice. So we'll be recognizing it not only in just May, but we also recognize it in November. I want to read the proclamation that Mayor Frank Scott Jr. has given us, and we are so proud and we thank him for his dedication to even thinking so much, uh, to give a value to the proclamation when we came to him uh, and talked about it. So, the proclamation reads, Proclamation, City of Little Rock, Arkansas. Know ye, all, know ye all people by these presents and greetings, whereas tobacco use deaths continue to be the number one preventable cause of death claimed in 45,000 African American lives a year, or lives in violence, AIDS, car accidents, and non tobacco related cancers combined, and whereas smoking, including tobacco containing menthol, is more people than alcohol, AIDS, car crashes, illegal drugs, murders, and suicides combined, and thousands more died from other tobacco-related causes, such as fires caused by smoking, 
more than the thousand dollars a year for a nationwide as smoking tobacco use. And whereas the smoking of menthol cigarettes is responsible for 1.5 million new African American smokers, the premature deaths of 157,000 African Americans, and the loss of 1.5 million life years among African Americans uh, over 1980 to 2018, and while African Americans constitute only 12 percent of the total U.S. population, these alarming amounts represent respectively 15 percent, 41 percent, and 50 percent of the total menthol-related harm. And whereas the tobacco industry spends $9.1 billion nationwide on marketing tobacco and $116.6 million is spent in marketing tobaccos in Arkansas, that's including tobacco, uh, including tobacco with menthol. Whereas many tobacco products besides cigarettes, including cigars, cigarillos, electronic cigarettes, are sold in menthol flavors that appeal to you and may serve as a gateway to smoking, and whereas the city of the Center for Black Health and Equity has created no Menthol Sunday has an annual opportunity for our faith communities to address the detrimental impact of tobacco and menthol have in our community by providing education on cessation, health effects, screening opportunities, and counseling. Whereas No Menthol Sunday is annually recognized from third Sunday in May and November to coincide with Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Now, therefore, our friend Star Junior, made up of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, do hereby proclaim November 19, 2023, as No Menthol Sunday in the Little Rock, in Little Rock, and call upon all residents of the city of Little Rock to join me in acknowledging the efforts of the Arkansas Cancer Coalition and the Center for Black Health and Equity in spreading awareness of the impact of menthol consumption in our communities, as well as promoting the health and well-being of residents. In witness therefore, thereof, I have here to set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Little Rock to be affixed on the 16th day of November in the year by Lord, 2023. Signed Frank Scott Jr., Mayor. I am grateful for this opportunity just to talk a little bit about menthol. I mean, everybody is mentioned some of their faith in menthol and tobacco in the community. This is a huge step. And I will say this, this is the first no sun, no menthol Sunday tobacco proclamation to be signed in the state of Arkansas by the mayor. And I just think that deserves a round of applause for me and stop for stepping out of the I hope uh, for the No Menthol no Arkansas communities that we will spread this proclamation around the state and other communities of color so that they too can get the education and awareness that's needed for us to get out of menthol, to get menthol out of us, and to stop smoking. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Law. In closing, I want to kind of summarize what you heard today because you heard great information, great Americans, no doubt about this, but you also heard about lung disease and lung causes. And we know that November is indeed considered and recognized um, as Lung Cancer Awareness Month, along with the Great American Smoke Out Day. Thursday, but just a few and let you know that I really appreciate you. So we better say that's um, the end of my remarks, but this is a time.